There's a lot of latest technology here on show at the National Plowing Championships, but I'm here with something that's not even on the market yet. I'm here with a team at Harbour Adams University to talk to them about one of their research projects, Norman the Agricultural Robot. Keep looking at the camera and I shouldn't. No, actually, that's fine. This way, that's here, why I was sort of standing over a bit. Yeah. Here. That, that's okay. why I actually moved over here to try and get yeah. you to yeah. get this away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and go ahead. So we also have a remote control system for Norman. So this is um, something that's very useful for loading them on and off vehicles and that sort of thing, getting in the precise place we want to start before we go to autonomous system mode. I bet I know a few people who would love to have a play around with this. Yeah, definitely. So <laughs> this just looks like the biggest games console I've ever seen. It is very much like that. So, so why does this work then, if you run me through this? So we've got this system here, that, all, that only goes up and down. That changes from off to remote control to autonomous mode. This little flap here, if you flick it down, that means he's now recording his current path. Okay. So you then you record a path, you switch it off, you then control him back into um, remote control mode, and then you use that to control him. Get him back to the start of where you started your path, flick that up, and then he should go his normal path. Symbols. I'm not going to say <laughs> I can do it now anytime soon, but that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um, Done. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Here with Lee Williams from Harper Adams. Lee, you're going to tell us a little bit about what you've got going on behind you. Who is this? Well, I'd like to introduce you to Norman, one of our Norman. agricultural. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We like to call all our robots by different names, whether they're Greek names or whether they're just Normans. You know, we we don't mind. Ah. It's up to the person that's developed them to come up with a name. And does, what's what's Norman's friends called? What what do you uh, call so the other Pomona, ones? We have Pomona, Dionysus. We have Ava. Okay. So lots of different names. Sounds like one big family. Is this? Is there something connected any of these, or what's the? Yeah, there certainly is. They all come from uh, the same stable, really. They're all based on autonomous systems, so they all can run um, around uh, uh -huh. the farm doing their own thing according to their 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 instructions. Right. And they don't need a driver whatsoever. Oh. So our tractor driver fans might not be too happy to hear about that then if Norman's going to put them out of a job. So what does what does Norman do then? What's his what's his thing to do? So Norman can do anything. He's a base platform, oh. so he can do uh, crop sensing. He can do soil measurements, pH values, uh, soil moisture. Uh, um, he can do soil um, nutrient measurements and things like that, compaction levels. He can um, till the land, he can uh, harvest, he can do whatever you like really. So walk me through a little bit about uh, how Norman is built up basically and how, how is he able to do all these things? How are you able to put all these implements onto him or is it through gadgets? Or so is it's clever all... engineering, that's what it's okay. about. That's what Harper Adams University is about. It's clever engineers, whether they're uh, mechanical engineers, electronic engineers, electrical, whether they're programmers, they can make uh, an autonomous system and it doesn't have to be one that doesn't have a driver so we okay. have lo lots of tractors and combine harvesters in which the farmer can drive them but if he wants if he gets tired or he just wants to go off and do something else he can push a button or once a day off probably into... more likely well that would be nice wouldn't it that's what we'd <laughs> like to see farmers looking after themselves and having a bit of time to themselves without a doubt so tell me how does this fit into some of the other projects that maybe our readers will be more familiar with um, at Harper Adams like we'll all have heard of Hands Free Hector and that's been such a phenomenal success of course the project's just been given to go ahead to expand to become a hands-free farm absolutely so i would love to hear a bit more about that yeah as well. scaled up from single hectare as you said to 35 hectares wow. uh, so that's a massive farm with a road lots of infrastructure lots of uh, farm buildings lots, lots of, of different challenges, new sure. challenges absolutely even public pedestrian footpaths um oh, wow. always going going through there where people can walk and obviously take their pets so our next um sort of generation of agricultural robots are going to be smarter Obviously, um, they're already very, very safe, have seven levels of um, safety systems, but we'll have additional systems on there as well, so, so that the public will be completely safe and their pets. And what, what step is that project currently at at the moment then? So that's one of the reasons Kit and uh, the, the team from Hans Free Hector do apologise because they really wanted to be here oh. at the National <laughs> Ploughing Championships. And they would have been, but the thing is, as you said, the project's only just got underway. Yeah and uh, they had a lot of work to, to actually do the, um, the uh, get the uh, land ready to do the um, planting this, this um, uh, autumn. And so, what's the first step with that then? What are they, what are they working on right so now? So they, they're um, tilling the land and then they'll do some rolling and then they'll actually do some seeding after that. So they're looking at, I think, establishing wheat. And all hands-free at this point? All hands-free. Oh, wow. 
as I believe it is. So I'm not an expert <laughs> on that particular project, but right. that's, that certainly will be the aim. I, I'm not certain in year one that they're planning to do that because there's right. so many challenges. They've got all the equipment. But that that's the ultimate aim is to get to that point. Oh, yes, where they're, definitely. Yeah. In year two and three, without a doubt. Brilliant. And how does Norman fit into all this then with so Hands Norman, Free? Yeah, good question. Because um, okay. uh, it came, it started as a, a student project. So these were um, wow. Master of Science Must be very engineers. exciting as a student to get to see a crazy idea end up standing at the National Yeah, I mean, these guys are like 19, yeah. 20 years old, really, in oh, their wow. second year of engineering, creating autonomous <laughs> robots, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, you know, people of that age can do such fantastic uh, work, right. really. So, yeah, it started off as a ma master's uh, project, a group research project. Mm -hmm. They developed the, the platform, uh, the, the robotic system you see behind you, okay. um, automated all the systems so it drives by wire and then they added the control system, the smart control system on, on top which makes Norman think for himself and drive around uh, for himself. Brilliant. I think we're probably ready to hear a little bit about the actual engineering side of the project so thank you very much Lee, for, your, for your time. You're very welcome. Megan Platt, one of the research engineers at Harper's, kindly agreed to show us some of the inner workings of, of Norman. So, Megan, could you just walk us through basically how, how does this work? How do yeah. you made them? So, right at the very beginning, we started with a John Deere petrol lawnmower. So, we've kept the engine, we've kept the chassis, and all that's still the same as the lawnmower. Removed the blade, obviously. <laughs> and then from there, we have put his um, little ACS system on. So, all the computing is in this box here. Okay, and so this... walk me through what, what is that then? What's an ACS system and what does so all this ACS do? ACS stands for Autonomous Control System. And right. what we've done is all of the things that usually would control this lawnmower, so steering, acceleration, we've done it so they could be controlled electronically rather than through a personal mechanic. Yeah. And then we've got computers that can then vary that. So they can take in information from sensors or a pre-mapped route, that kind of thing, and then they can output them to the system and that will control the steering and the speed values. Okay, and you talked to me a little bit about sensors there. Where yeah. where do you put them and what so, kind of things do you Right now he's a bit of a simpler one. So all we've got is this LiDAR here and that picks up objects and will output the distance to the objects and also what angle they are. So it comes out as a beam like this. Okay. And each of the beam each um each LiDAR is split into 11 beams and each beam will, you know, have its own angle so we know what the angle is to the object. So was that, is that kind of his eyes almost then? Yeah, pretty much. And as, as well as that, we've got a few safety systems. So this bump stop here, Okay. if that gets hit, that will just completely cut the engine. Right. And we've also got the big red button at the back, which will also cut the engine if that's pressed. Right, okay. So very safety good. is very important when it comes to autonomous systems. So he's not going to go bumping into anything in the field anytime no, exactly. soon then. Yeah. And what, what else have you got here? Because I see there's a lot of other... Yeah. Uh, what's the keyboard for, for instance? Well, the keyboard is for when we're um, programming him or looking into his computer system to actually run him. We don't need the keyboard. It's just we right. need to like, go inside, change a few th systems about him. Okay, and uh, what's this on the back then? Is this a sprayer? Yeah, so this is a okay. sprayer. So the whole point of Norman is he's a tractor platform and you can put anything on the back of him. So right now we're just doming the fact that we can have a sprayer on the back. Okay, and what kind of uses would a farmer maybe, other than spraying, use this for then? Well, it could be um, anything that you would use a small tractor for, I suppose. But the thing mm -hmm. is, tractors have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger to... And this is the total opposite, really, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So you get much less compaction. But the thing is, if, if you have an autonomous tractor, it can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you wouldn't have to have such a big, massive machine. Right. And do you think that's where we'll get to someday? I hope so, yes. It might be quite a way into the future <laughs> yet, but maybe one day. Brilliant. And Megan, you have quite an interesting a journey into engineering yourself. Yeah. Um, if you could just tell me a little bit about how did you get involved in this specific project and how did you become an engineer to begin with? Right, so I'm from a farming background. My dad was a dairy farmer in Shropshire. Brilliant. And so he'll be very excited about this then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I've just always, the thing of being on the farm, the machinery is just always out in the open. You can always see it. And there's always so many moving parts. It was just very, very interesting. So I just got into engineering that way, I suppose. And you did a research master's with Harper as well? Yes, you? I did. Yeah. So that was actually based around software engineering more than right. um, like these sort of autonomous vehicles. But what it was, was to identify crops from weeds using images. Okay. So that would be used for precision weeding kind of things, like either laser weeding or precision um, herbicides. And is that something you've got your influence on Norman at some point to get him yes. into that kind of work? Well, maybe. But the thing is, with that kind of work, identifying objects could be used for identifying anything. Identifying people is a very useful thing to have on an autonomous vehicle. Right. Perfect. Thank you so much, Megan. No it's been wonderful hearing about this.